Hi, I'm Nils Posegger and here comes the next video for the new drill down concept in Smart Analytics, providing hands on experience for the data drill down. Now I want to start the drill down exercise directly in level 2 using the data selection options there. As in my last video, we are looking at data from our Dallas US campaign conducted beginning of the year. Let's move to Smart Analytics. I'm in level 2 analysis in my UE drill down workspace. As I'm going to do everything in the level 2 drill down workspace now, I can close down the navigation bar and I also can increase Smart Analytics to full screen to save some extra space. So as you know from my last videos, the UI drill down workspace contains of a data selection part and an analysis part. In the data selection part, we first want to reduce our list of sessions and tests to the ones we are interested now in. So I want to do data drill down and I want to concentrate on tests with degraded downlink performance. And the best test case to do so is the capacity downlink test. So I'm filtering my data set to capacity downlink. I will need to focus on a single operator. I'm selecting AT&T. And I want to focus on the technology LTE 5G and R. This is where LTE acts as a master and 5G in non-standalone mode is added when high data rate is requested. Okay, now I have uh, already reduced my set to the filter defined above. I need to understand what degraded throughput performance means. So I check the uh, physical throughput from um, AT&T, it's around uh, 55 megabit per second. So tests with degraded downlink throughput performance would be uh, have results well below that. And in my test list, I can see now um, the average uh, uh, throughput of the capacity test. And for example, I can select here the 11 megabit uh, which is well below the average 5.55 megabit per second. In order to start my drill down, I can now double click on this test and Smart Analytics will move to the green analysis area. And uh, as in my videos before, uh, the analysis tabs shown are content sensitive to the test I have selected. So I will see uh, service related uh, analysis tabs for capacity downlink, of course some common tabs and uh, tabs related to my technology. 4G and 5G as I'm in non-standalone mode. Okay, now I've done my selection so I will stay a bit on this on this test and I can also remove the, the session and test panel in order to have even more space for analysis um, for my demo. So in the info tab um, there's not much for me to see. I can see that the capacity downlink test was successful. Um, I can see that especially at the beginning the throughput is quite low uh, considering the technology we have in place and at the end it seems to be ramping up a bit. But looking closer to it uh, in the further steps. So in my session overview, which will always be present in my analysis space of this workspace, we can see um, that the data technology uh, is at LTE 5G and R. So we have a 5G carrier, which is then uh, removed and we have some reconfiguration um, and then it's added again later on. This kind of handovers or like removing and uh, adding of the secondary um, 5G carrier can already be an indication uh, for lower throughput. What we can also see uh, we're doing uh, on the on the primary cell in LTE we're doing ping pong handover. So I'm moving from 281 to 159 and then later on from 159 back to 281. So let's keep this in mind. Um, and step by step analyzing uh, the low performing throughput. In the service related tab, we can see uh, uh, further information um, uh, for the for the for the results. So here on the right side, we will have the um, the IP throughput, 
and the bytes transferred and we can see that there's a slow ramp up uh, at the beginning of the test which has a test duration of right, around seven seconds and we can see that like let's say two-thirds of the test are, is conducted with very low throughput like below five megabit per second and then in the end it's ramping up uh, uh, close to 30 megabit per second which is of course not enough to uh, drive up the overall average and is also still below the average value of 55 megabit per second we have seen. If we move a bit further down in this uh, uh, service oriented analysis tab we can see a breakdown of the throughput in the physical components for the 5G and the 4G lag and uh, we can see the total physical throughput is the shaded one here. I can always uh, show and remove the, uh, the different uh, components in this chart and also the IP throughput um, I can see here which should be from theory and also we can see this in the practical results be a bit below the total physical throughput because it's uh, uh, so a couple of layers uh, above so we remove um, uh, header information so therefore we get a bit lower resulting throughput. So let's m look at the two components the, the LTE throughput here the dotted line and the 5G and R throughput. Um, I would like to draw your attention to the 5G throughput here below which is like not contributing very much uh, and um, only increasing a bit I am just say a bit because we're talking about 5 megabit per second at the end and the majority of the uh, uh, downlink uh, throughput is coming from the LTE physical throughput which can be seen here. The total physical throughput uh, is then uh, representing the sum of the 4G and the 5G throughput. Okay so we have already uh, two indications we have uh, like ping pong hand over in the beginning plus the adding and removal of the 5G lag and we can see that uh, uh, the throughput is slowly ramping up and we got the main contribution from the 4G lag. So let's move in on in the uh, analysis and check the 5G radio. So the first two charts are empty. Uh, 5G is not configured as a master cell group but the secondary cell group so we don't have any information here. This would be filled when we would have a, a standalone operation which is not in this case and we have the secondary cell group here. So if we are looking down at the um, signal strengths and the signal quality we can see that the signal strengths um, is moving around minus 80 to minus 100 dB which is not the worst we can imagine is also not very good but well, we can also see two drops here where it really goes further down and when we're looking at the quality um, on the SINR uh, marked in red here we can see uh, really low values below minus 10 and even some drops where we also can see the drops and assuming that the synchronization is even lost here in these cases. Okay. This is uh, interesting because we can conclude we have bad radio quality for the 5G lag. Let's look at the LTE part. So what immediately uh, is visible we have a lot of RC reconfigurations and uh, they're reflecting of course the ping pong handover, the uh, removal and adding of the uh, 5G lag and um, of course potentially measurement configurations. So this is the first very visible part. When we're looking at the level of the um, of the radio we can see very low quality at the beginning of the test and then shortly after handover it recovers and then at the end of the test the radio quality gets better. Now, remembering 
uh, that we also had uh, a better throughput performance at the end. So this follows the the trend of the uh, quality we see here. Regarding the, the, the signal strengths, also in LTE, we are around um, minus 80, minus 70 even. So the radio, uh, the signal strengths is definitely not an issue here. But the quality, especially at the beginning, that's concerning a bit. Okay, so much to the primary carrier. Let's have a short glance at the secondary carrier. So here we can see the um, the uh, radio signal strength and quality of the secondary carrier. In in, in light blue we have the uh, the uh, the SC1, so the first secondary carrier. And uh, what is visible, it's not active all the time. So we are also seeing here that we don't have all the time a contribution from the secondary carrier. Third carrier, or like the legend indicates a, f a fourth carrier, that's not even visible. So I'm assuming now that uh, we also have a very low contribution of LTE carrier aggregation. Let's confirm this uh, when we're looking at the uh, PDSCH, starting with the 5G PDSCH, but not expecting much here. Um, as we know already, we had bad radio quality. And um, when we see the PDSCH throughput um, of the secondary uh, 5G node, we can see very low throughput, high block error rate, and only at the end of the test, we're um, seeing a bit of contribution, which follows uh, what we have seen in the service-related tabs. So tick in a box, uh, 5G contribution, really low. Root cause here, radio quality. So let's move to the LTE PDSCH. And uh, this chart draws our attention to um, what I meant uh, from the LTE radio tab. We have the main contribution from the primary carrier and the secondary carrier is not uh, contributing much of the time. Let's see. Let's see how far do we get. Regarding the configuration, we will have uh, several carriers configured with 10 megahertz. This is typical for AT&T. Uh, they're deploying um, the uh, LTE and 5G frequencies in the low and mid bands with 10 megahertz channels. So this is what to expect. And uh, we see here, even though four, at this point four channels are configured, we never get contribution from anything beyond the second carrier. So let's take a look at the um, contribution of the two different carriers. Here below we have broken down the throughput to the two different carriers. What is also visible, like in 5G, the high block error rate at the beginning of the test. Just let's move here. This is the beginning of the test. Uh, and then here you will have completed the ping pong handover. Uh, in this area, we, 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 we really got no contribution, throughput contribution. And then it starts and the main component here we can see from the primary carrier. The green, the green dots here, this is the block error rate of the secondary carrier, which is also in the beginning very high, corresponding with the low signal quality. So, summarizing our findings for this uh, analysis, we would need to classify this test as run issue with the primary cause on bad quality in 4G and 5G. We can also add further information uh, to this uh, analysis, um, which is low or no contribution from the 5G lag. We have low LTE carrier aggregation utilization. And when the secondary carrier is active, we also have low contribution from this uh, uh, second carrier, again, due to bad radio quality. I hope you liked the video. It was useful for you. And um, stay tuned for uh, upcoming videos on Smart Analytics hand-on.